Good afternoon. My name is Carl Weaver. We're here at the Bell Harbor Convention Center on February 23rd for this fantastic Chinatown Chinese Chamber Conference and Summit on technology, finance, infrastructure, and all kinds of science technologies. My name is Carl Weaver. Again, I work for Rivets Corp. I'm a wireless market mobile device specialist. I've spent my entire professional career focused on taking mobile technologies and selling it to the Far East, greater Chinese and Asia Pacific markets. Uh, this afternoon, I'll be giving a presentation on third-party mobile payment platforms in China and comparing that with the United States uh, and looking at the activity for e-commerce and commerce. Uh, and it will be very, very interesting. So, welcome to attend. Thank you. 西雅图中国人华人西雅图的人欢迎今天下午参加我们今天的演讲我是魏卡尔魏我的魏卡片的卡西尔丁的儿魏卡尔我很高兴今天下午能够提供我的第三方就是我的演讲就是关于那个移动
uh, payment or the mobile ecosystem in general is very, very complex. And how it applies is you have to start back up, not from the mobile device, not from the operator, but actually start and back up what is on the mobile device that allows mobile payment. Well, you basically have silicon chip manufacturers and they supply to the handset vendors. But the operating system vendors like BlackBerry, Google, Microsoft, and uh, Apple iOS, they also supply for the handset, the operating system. We also have the apps developers. The apps developers are the guys who are developing apps for these online stores. Uh, and they usually have an apps marketplace that is online or basically they provide it directly into the market or they provide it to the operator, either one. You also have value added service providers. They provide additional value with services for your, uh, your account with the operators. The operators sell into the vertical markets, consumers, individuals, government, and machine to machine. Next. The issue with the prep with the previous slide is that there are security breaches all along the way. So without security, mobile payments is not really possible to scale. Now, I call this the holy grail of mobile payments. First, we had Apple Pay in October 2014. October 2014, Apple Pay came about. And everybody started to emulate that, basically. They started to emulate Apple Pay. Further on, we had something called Google Pay, which turned into Android Pay. Basically, that's using postcard emulation, provisioning a mobile payment token from the cloud back down into the mobile handset's uh, mobile wallet. That's basically what Google and Android are doing. Samsung is doing the same thing. We have Samsung Pay, but Samsung also has another technology which is really cool and interesting called um, Magnetic uh, Secure Transmission. Now this is called MST, this is interesting. It's a, basically taking the MagStrip technology, embedding it onto a chip, putting that chip on the smartphone. Uh, so basically Samsung probably has the most interesting play um, of all these uh, pay companies. We also have uh, Alibaba's Alipay, and uh, they're working with a company called Meiju. They invested 5% in them, and they're also pitching their Ali Yun, which is their own OS for smartphones. On the other side, we have PayPal, which is, uh, in America, a third-party payment platform. Uh, basically, anybody that's going to do a third-party payment platform needs a license from the government. Um, there's also Bitcoin, which is what? Cryptocurrencies, blockchain, it's a virtual currency. So it has its place to play, but uh, you know, there's still issues with security. Next. Uh, this is a bit complicated, but basically think about this. There, there's basically offline, which we call proximity, where you take your smartphone and touch the point of sale right there at the, at the, at the shop that you're buying your goods from. That's what we call offline proximity payments. Online payments, basically is remote online payments for e-commerce, digital products. Basically, that's where you're going onto a browser of a tablet or a smartphone or your PC and you're using your credit card details and you're making a mobile payment. You could also do that from your smartphone, but it's essentially online, it's not offline. It's always online. And so there's a big difference between offline and online payments. That's probably the most important thing to remember. Next. Uh, there's a there's a basically a four-player chain in the whole payment ecosystem revolving credit cards and debit cards as well. So you have the payee, which is the person, the retailer, who's selling you the product. You have the payer, which is us. We have our smartphone, we want to buy something. Uh, but we also have a, the consumer's bank, which is my bank, okay, my Visa, my MasterCard. Uh, but we also have the merchant's bank, which is their processing bank. In the middle, we have the financial network and the settlement institute that makes sure the payment is uh, validated, authenticated. Next, NFC, which stands for not National Football Conference, yay, go Seahawks. It doesn't stand for no functional clue. It doesn't stand for not for commerce. It stands for near field communications. Uh, I basically was the rainmaker for this technology in 2008, I was hired by a French company called Jumalto. They hired me out of the CTIA show. I was giving a presentation. I was invited to go back to China to promote this technology in China and Taiwan to all the handset manufacturers. The only way this technology would become um, basically prevalent on uh, in the ecosystem was to get it into the smartphones of the Chinese handset manufacturers in China and Taiwan, including the the uh, the the uh, major tier one and tier two OEMs. And so I, I basically used 
Uh, I had Jamalto's SIM card and I worked with NXP to help design this technology into all the smartphone and asset manufacturers. I did that from 2008 until mid-2010 and then I was put on another embedded uh, sec mobile security solution for um, uh, mobile apps and processor chips called the TEE, the Trusted Execution Environment. I spent five years in China enabling all these cutting edge technologies so that uh, the world and America can enjoy mobile payments as we know it now. Secure, tamper resistant mobile payments. Uh, but near, back to this point here, near field communications is, I've, I've felt that this is a technology that's been under hyped uh, and under promoted for such a long time. Um, and we had ISIS in 2013 launch to pr try to promote mobile payments. Basically, ISIS was a combination of T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, combined into, with a whole mobile payment platform based on the SWP, NFC SIM card, launching in America. Eventually, ISIS wasn't a good name, was it? So they basically changed the name to SoftCard. However, in late 2014, Google simply purchased the whole technology uh, and that company basically no longer exists. So we have a real void in the market today. So you go into an operator's network today and they say, I want a mobile payment smartphone. They say, well, go, here's an Android smartphone, I'll go download the uh, Android app yourself, go do it yourself. Uh, or if you walk into the store and I, they, you say, I want Apple Pay, they say, oh, here it is, Apple Pay. So you see, Apple Pay has taken over the mobile payment um, standardization for what mobile payment is around the world because it's the KISS principle, it just simply works. Back to NFC again, here in the Northwest we have the Orca card. The Orca card is using NFC for what? Subways, buses, ferries, you just use your card and basically with your card you're able to uh, touch the reader in the bus uh, and then your payment occurs. I'll talk a little bit later about value added transit cards where you can do more. And by the way, the Orca card or the NFC in the Orca card for transit is also on the University of Washington uh, student ID card so that's very interesting. Next. Uh, as I say I evangelized this technology for a very very long time. It's really cool how many interesting use cases there are. You basically have transport which I talked about. You have identification. One day your passport and your, your driver's license will be chip based and contactless, where you just touch a reader to authenticate, identify, authenticate, uh, certify who you are uh, to a, a policeman, or basically when you go into the airport uh, with your passport, it'll all use NFC because it's very, very secure. Physical access, I have NFC for doors, um, buildings, office buildings, um, entry into, into buildings, uh, doors, even windows. Uh, Smart posters, you'll see, I think you will see Starbucks using smart posters because they want to reduce the queue of their line. So I simply walk into the door, there's a smart poster, I use my NFC with my smartphone, I touch the poster, it, is already, it already knows my credit card details and basically uh, it's getting my, my drink ready for me or I select the drink that I want. There will usually be specials with these posters. You can get a, a uh, hazelnut latte or something like that and there'll be a poster for many of these things you just take your handset touch the one you want it'll use your credit card it'll debit it or, or credit it already uh, and you just simply wait in the queue pick it up it's so efficient to use NFC um, ticketing for movies etc etc how about car parking yeah bingo Seattle we need that uh, loyalty and, and membership well a Starbucks has a loyalty card Starbucks is very critical for the adoption of NFC because Starbucks did not accept EMV code standards at their point of sale. They're using barcode. Um, and basically barcode for their loyalty cards, um, and this just doesn't work in the digital mobile world uh, for security. It's just simply not secure enough. And they've had, they've had breaches, even though it's a closed system. So basically, Loyalty, you'll see Starbucks adopting EMV Core and NFC at the point of sale and for the credit cards and also the smartphone. NFC can be put on the credit card, contactless, and also in the smartphone. Uh, and then and, and then we talked about cashless mobile payments and even using it for your tablet or smartphone. Even using NFC at the ATM machine with the various uh, use, uh, use, there are various modes for NFC. Next. What I, talk, what I want to talk about is lifestyle applications. Basically, from the point of you waking up in the morning, going to work, you will be using NFC. If you take public transportation, if you 
or if you're traveling anywhere, you're going to see IATA, the International Airline Transportation Association, working with this organization called CITA to enable a 19-point plan from the point of entry into the airport to use NFC and uh, contactless on a smartphone for security purposes. Um, Apple has an application just waiting for IATA, International Airline Transportation Association, uh, to implement the plan and help it become a standard. Once that becomes a standard, NFC will be very ubiquitous. It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Next. As I mentioned before, NFC for coupon and loyalty programs, well, Starbucks has adopted, and actually Jennifer Bailey of Apple, late last year, last October, mentioned that they would adopt, uh, they would work with Starbucks, and, and they said that Starbucks has adopted Apple Pay at their point of sale. Well, we don't see it at too many Starbucks here yet, but I did see it one place already in the most obscure Starbucks store. I did see an EMV Co enabled terminal with also a chip and pin. Those are also NFC enabled. So I did see it, it is coming. Uh, they have to roll out to 220,000 stores around the world. Actually, many of those stores around the world are already EMV Co and NFC enabled. In fact, we Americans are the laggards. Next, uh, this is basically a snapshot for all the standards for payment, all these pay standards. The key point to know is the SIM card for NFC, SWP, meaning single wire protocol, NFC SIM card based mobile payments on smartphones, mostly Google, Google Android smartphones. It's not going away, it's going to remain. Uh, and basically it uses a physical secure element a UICC and the ownership of the network well that's the owners that's the mobile network operators and the control is by the operators and it has multiple applications but no tokenization okay so the sim card at this point in time from operators doesn't have tokenization uh, let's look at Apple Pay it has a physical embedded secure element it's embedded onto the, uh, the the motherboard of the of the PCB the PCB of the of the uh, smartphone of the Apple iPhone it has its own control, they control that. They are working with Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and others, and they provide tokenization, so that's very cool. Samsung, as I mentioned, they have a global strategy, of the domestic strategy, and Android, uh, Google Pay has emerged to become, Apple, uh, to become Android Pay, and it will use what we call host card emulation. Next. Um, it's important to note that actually near field communications has three modes. The first mode is car, uh, actually the the mode here is called card emulation mode. That's what you are doing when you emulate a credit card in your smartphone. That mode is what Apple is using. That's the only mode that Apple is using right now. There, believe it or not, there are other there are two other modes. Another one is called peer to peer, where you can take two smartphones and transfer information, even transfer money, or you can transfer from your smartphone to an ATM, to de de deposit or withdraw digital currency back to the smartphone. Okay, and that's basically another function which is using peer-to-peer. -peer. The third basically is rewrite mode. That's where you have NFC tags that you can attach to all kinds of things or a poster where you can uh, basically read or write. So you can actually read or write a tag to anything. Next, uh, this is what I mentioned before. In 2013, a small Texas company called Simply Tap sold this HCE, host card emulation technology, to Google. And then Google implemented, uh, implemented it onto the KitKat operating system in 2013. Uh, by 2014, I'd found out about this technology and I said, wow, well, this is going to kill the company I used to work for, or at least kill some of their business, Jamalto. I used to work in, in China five years for a company called Jamalto, uh, which is a fr the largest digital security company in the world. It's a French company. Um, but basically, host card emulation. Avoid, this is normally how you would make a card emulation payment using a secure element, the SIM card. You basically have the NFC reader at the point of sale read the handset and use the SIM card to authenticate the payment, payment data and credentials. Well, now you simply use um, this HCE technology and it goes through the controller up to the CPU and out to the cloud. So you're avoiding uh, the use of the SIM card for the authentication uh, and you're authenticating it in the cloud, you're providing a token from the cloud, but that goes also back down into the handset, into the open operating system. 
So hello Houston, that's still not 100% secure, and that's why another technology called the TEE is very important and prevalent. Next. Um, but what we see now going on in the world today for at least Android's perspective, not Apple. Apple doesn't use HC. Android, all Android smartphones do, as well as BlackBerry. BlackBerry's uh, solution is called virtual target emulation. It's basically avoiding the SIM card as well. Google is avoiding using the SIM card and that and a host card emulation emulates the payment credentials uh, in the cloud and basically provides it as a token or basically takes the credit card data and provides it as a token which comes back down to the open operating system ready to be touched at the point of sale uh, in the open operating system through the mobile wallet. Basically that's how that works. Um, but you have two solutions here. You have a hybrid solution emerging. Mobile network operators will still use the SIM card because that's their only play right now. They'll use the SIM card plus, um, plus uh, SWP NFC SIM card for NFC and they'll use the SIM card to do that. But on Google Android operating system, it's already present, it's there. You, as a bank, can develop a mobile wallet. Your mobile wallet can be compatible with HCE. So if you have an Android smartphone, you will be compatible with two types, and it will be up to the handset manufacturer, the bank, maybe even the MNO to, to provision that handset to do the type of mobile payment using NFC. NFC is the future. Barcodes are not safe, they're not secure. Next. Uh, now let's talk about what we uh, focus on, which is third-party payments. What does that mean? Third-party payments means, well, basically, it's not the government, it's not an m &O, it's, uh, it's basically a third-party payment platform, uh, and they need to apply for a license with the government, normally, for this to happen, or at least the uh, Federal Trade Commission. So, in the United States versus China, you can see the situation. The market size for China is 426 billion. It's only 300. It's it's, it's only 307 billion, uh, 305 billion in the United States. So China is already the largest mobile payment market on the planet. If you look at the projected growth for China, it will be about 650. In the United States, Japan, South Korea, France. These won't even equal up to be 225 million. They won't even equal one market in China. It is the largest third party right now, mobile payment market, mostly. Why third party? Because it's mostly Alipay and Tencent capturing most of that market. UnionPay has a very small percentage of the market. Next. So let me explain that UnionPay is on one side along grudgingly with the mobile network operators, because then the mobile network operators use the SIM card for NFC, okay, and they're using near field communications, SWP NFC SIM card, that's their baby. But UnionPay is also using NFC for the handsets, uh, even though they're using, they're going to implement host card emulation, but it's, host card emulation is still NFC. Host card emulation is just a way to avoid the SIM card. Um, and, but the credit cards right now are using NFC as well. So. China UnionPay is the largest credit card processing company in the world. They're the largest credit, essentially the largest credit card company in the world. They're, they're larger than Visa or MasterCard. Uh, and they use NFC for the smartphones and for contactless and credit and debit cards. They're also using contactless. On the other side, we have Alibaba. Whoa, Alibaba, which is Ali, Ali, Alibaba, which is a huge, largest uh, e-commerce uh, platform website, the T-Mall on the planet, followed by Amazon and then Microsoft, right? Um, Amazon and Microsoft services. So basically, Alibaba has a wallet called Alipay. Alipay wallet resides on any smartphone, you can install it. But the problem is they're using barcode. They're using barcode. Barcode is not safe, it's not secure. And that's why everything's migrating to NFC, near field communications. Uh, and WeChat, which is owned by Tencent, I've done the same thing. These are number one, number two in the market. Look at the penetration, it's huge. It's huge. But they're gonna have a problem, but not necessarily a problem. They're just not using NFC in a big way. They're still using their barcode mobile wallet on that you download onto your smartphone. That's all going away in 2016 because UnionPay, China UnionPay has launched China UnionPay Pay, yeah. But they're also partnering grudgingly with the MNOs. They have no choice, they need to partner with the MNOs. And they're also partnering with Apple, 
Apple Pay, Samsung, Samsung Pay, and Google for Android Pay. So actually, they're partnering with those guys, along with all of the Chinese handset manufacturers. 90% of the Chinese handset manufacturers use Android Pay. Next. Um, SOE means state-owned enterprise. These are basically government entities, and basically all the banks in China rely on the technology coming from China Union Pay. So the banks administer the credit cards, uh, to the consumers, but the technology, the network, the platform, the security all comes from China Union Pay. They relegate and they, they provide the services for all the clearing of the credit and debit card transactions. And so they're also responsible for making sure that Alibaba and Tencent are using secure methods of payment. Barcode is not a secure method of payment. Why is it still going on? Last year they tried to ban it. Uh, but the, it was overwhelming rejection of that because, well, everybody in China is using barcode to make the payment because it's simple. But NFC will overtake that in 2016 because you need to pay point-of-sale devices, which they also supply to the market. There are, I think, 40 million uh, point-of-sale devices in China. Uh, there might be more than that. Uh, but basically, they all support NFC now. Um, so you have on one side uh, Union Pay which is a state-owned enterprise, China Mobile, Unicom, and Telecom, which are state-owned enterprises. And on the other side, you have these very, uh, very, very savvy online e-commerce e companies like Alibaba and Tencent. Uh, next. So China's financial sector, though, we have the state-owned enterprises and we have these savvy private companies colliding with each other because these online e-commerce companies want to be banks. They want to be virtual banks. They want to supply debit, credit. They want to do what the banks are doing. Oh, but the banks are state owned, okay? So you're gonna see a shuffling of, um, you're going to see the Chinese government basically saying to China uh, Union Pay, hey, you know, this Mr. Jack Ma of Alibaba, these guy, this guy is very competitive and uh, with these 10 cent, they want to provide financial services uh, so what's your what's your response to that? You know, get on the ball because they own most of the market for third-party payments on smartphones. They own most of the market. It's an uphill battle in China for China Union Pay. It's an uphill battle for Apple, for Samsung, for anybody that's trying to promote near-field communications mobile payments. Next, uh, this basically says that. Um, uh, mobile payments again are very competitive, so they actually tried to bar about they banned barcodes in China, and it didn't work. But it's very, very correct that Alibaba, Tencent, they're trying to be uh, virtual banking organizations, and they and they're actually also purchasing lots of other assets in China because now is the time to do it. The financial market is open now. The WTO has made sure of that. It's open for Visa, MasterCard, and Amex to try to, and PayPal to try to get in. <clears throat> but on the other hand, China Union Pay is going global. I mean, the Chinese are traveling all over the world, and China Union Pay will follow them with the credit card. So expect China Union Pay. Well, right now in San Francisco, you can see the logo for China Union Pay in San Francisco International Airport. Expect Union Pay to show up on more doorsteps as more Chinese diaspora show up with their credit cards to buy things around North America. It's just a fact. Next. Uh, what's really important to note is China's the largest mobile payment, uh, mobile payment uh, company on the planet here. 55% of the people use their smartphone to make mobile payment. Uh, and look where they, look at the United States. Wow, we're not even close. Asia leads, basically. And Again, Alipay for third-party payments leads there. Transaction volume um, is huge in China compared to North America. <clears throat> so you can see that China's really the leader, and that's why we Americans need to see and observe what's going on there, and we need to provide our services to help, uh, as well as invite those Chinese companies who want to provide their technology and services in North America. It just, it just helps. Next. Uh, this is cool. This is basically stored value card. You have the yo-yo ka, and this yo-yo ka is basically the value, the uh, stored value contactless uh, transit card in Greater China, and also Badatong, which is the octopus card for Hong Kong. Successful, tremendously successful. These cards are in Taiwan and China, and basically you top it up. 
you can top it up with your smartphone now, you top it up and uh, you can either use your smartphone because they both come with mobile wallet apps now or you could use the card and you can go into not just the subway but you can buy food and drink and other goods in the subway or along the subway and not just the subway now especially with Hong Kong International Airport you can use Octopus card to buy Starbucks latte. Starbucks has, an, has a store in Hong Kong International Airport and you can use Octopus to do that to make the payment. You can also use your smartphone, but I didn't see too many people using the smartphone. They were using the card. Boop, tap, bingo. Here's my latte. Next. Uh, China Union Pay Pay. So basically, China Union Pay wants to subsidize the OS, subsidize the handset manufacturers, and mostly subsidize the Chinese companies uh, to promote NFC mobile payments on smartphones. Uh, because uh, it hasn't moved as fast as they want. So they're, they're subsidizing that. They're also working with NXP. Uh, they're working with lots and lots of companies. They're working with Apple. Basically, f um, it's a competition between the whole barcode wallet payment structure and the more tamper-resistant secure NFC. Next. It's a very painful experience right now if you put the China mobile um, loyalty app on your smartphone because it hasn't been implemented in China quite yet, and you're using a loyalty card with barcode also for the Starbucks, it's a very painful experience. First of all, you have to have a local Chinese handset in order to even uh, download and use this app in China. Painful, hello, going out, going, it's going away, forget it. Wait for China to implement Eavico at the Starbucks point of sale devices with NFC. It's happening in 2016. Next. Um, it talks a little bit about the fintech market. Uh, you can look at these slides, basically third party mobile payments rule right now. Next, and this is my summary. Seattle is one of the top locations for the development of contactless mobile NFC payments. Why? Well, we have three Chinese companies. We have ZTE, Huawei, and HTC, Honda, all here operating. They all make NFC mobile payment smartphones. They're all supplying to T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. All right. So they should be the ones pushing for this uh, with the operators. Also, there's mobile wallet development going on here with Amazon, with Microsoft, with Google. They're all developing mobile wallet technologies for the smartphone OS. Seattle is the portal to the Pacific. Okay, That is basically for advanced mobile technologies. But I say that the Pacific is coming to Seattle. The Chinese diaspora with, all, with lots of money and lots of... Um, and technology investment that they'd like to bring are coming here for and they're bringing mobile payment technologies basically I had to go to China to scale this technology for Jamalto and now this technology is coming to the United States to uh, the big cloud companies right uh, and I can ex you can expect to see lots of partnerships going on finally uh, the usage of NFC and biometric authentication security for mobile payments especially the final alliance uh, scheme the authentication scheme it's going to be very, very prevalent this year. You're going to see all the smartphone manufacturers providing biometric authentication. But that authentication, if it resides in the open operating system of the smartphone, is still not safe. It's not secure. So you still need something like the TEE, the Trusted Execution Environment, embedding it into a mobile apps processor chip on the smartphone um, with ARM Trust Zone and Trustonix TE, Trusted Execution Environment. Something like what Microsoft has been trying with Trusted Computing Module technology. So basically that's um, going to become very prevalent biometric authentication. Your thumb, your voice, your heartbeat, your Valentine's Day people, your heartbeat, um, or even um, your DNA. So you may prick your thumb and or of course retina as, as well. So those are biometric authentication schemes that are happening down the road. Next. Okay, this is my presentation. My, my name is Carl Weaver. Good way,